Satan confess him, King of glory now. Go on, go on. <laughs> this pleasure, we should call him Lord, who from the beginning. Okay, George, hear the effect. Sing the words. At his voice creation sprang at once to all the angel faces of the hosts of light, thrones and dominations, stars upon their way. All the heavenly orders in the great array. Humbled for a season to receive a name from the lips of sinners Unto who he came, faithfully he bore it, spotless to the last, brought it back victorious when from death he passed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Mass tonight has been offered to Thomas and Isabel White. We also like to extend condolences to Luke and to Bill on the death of Emma Margaret earlier this week. Her funeral will take place on Thursday. Prepare ourselves to celebrate together the Holy Mass. Let us acknowledge our sin. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie, Kyrie. Eleison, Christe, Christe, Ele, to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will.
on earth, peace to people of good will. mercy, who, in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. and distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God. And whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult, because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth, the word of the Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those who sin you forgive, they are forgiven. For those who sin you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes and the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to leave. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs which Jesus worked, and the disciples saw but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. always find this a very difficult Sunday to preach on. Not because the readings are particularly difficult, nor even because you might think we exalted the preaching last week weekend 
with Holy Thursday, Thursday Good, Good Friday, Friday and Easter. It's because the readings for the second Sunday of Easter are so rich. And also because in 2000, Pope St. John Paul II has added another dimension, the divine mercy. So my dilemma is, how do we choose what to preach about? Because in the first reading, we have the early church gathering together, learning how to be church, learning how to love one another. All doubt, all questions are put aside. They are learning to live and to give. But in our second reading, we have the true meaning of faith, which is God's love revealed in Jesus Christ. And then the gospel, so many things. Firstly, Jesus appears and says, peace be with you. Often after his death and resurrection, his first words are, peace be with you. Then we have the Holy Spirit being bestowed upon the apostles. What gift is he being given for? so that the church might forgive sins, that we might inherit the power from Jesus himself and from God himself to forgive sins. And then, of course, there's the powerful story of Thomas, doubting Thomas, but it teaches more about faith. We want concrete answers. We want to be able to touch and to see. And certainly in our modern day, in our scientific age, for want of a better expression, we want things that we can touch and see. Faith has become ephemeral, something which we don't trust. And yet Thomas says, my Lord and my God. The greatest expression, the most succinct expression of faith that we will ever have in the church. And finally, we get Jesus again saying to the apostles, peace be with you. And that is what really struck me this week, because looking around the world, how much do we need peace? Look at Israel and Palestine. The world seems unmoved until aid workers are killed. 30,000 Palestinians, 1,600, 700 Jews, but it's only when the, the aid people get killed does it become a matter of national intervention and international intervention. Peace be with you. And similarly, Ukraine and Russia, we see that war hotting up again with attacks nightly on Kharkiv. We need peace. And I don't know about you, but the threats coming from different parts of the world we see possible war in Serbia, war in Africa. It makes me disturbed. I need to hear those words from Christ again. Peace be with you. I need to feel them in my heart. I need to receive them into my heart. Whenever we are disturbed, whenever we are troubled, then we should go immediately to Christ and ask for that peace. But so often we don't. We retire into worry, we retire into questioning. We shouldn't. We should always have recourse to Christ. Because we saw that Thomas saw and touched. But he did it so that we could know and believe. So let us allow the risen Christ to rise again in our hearts, so we might know indeed his voice speaking to us, and let us give, let us let him give us his peace. It isn't always easy, but it is his greatest gift. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to come to us now, to come to our world, to bestow upon us the peace of the risen Christ.
we profess together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thanking God for his mercy and peace revealed in the death and resurrection of his Son, we turn to him now, imploring his mercy in our needy world. <clears throat> Church continue to, to rejoice in the resurrection, that her witness to the mercy of God will inspire the world to faith, to come to faith. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray for peace in our world. May God's mercy bring about change in all the troubled areas of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in authority, that their positions of power may lead them to extend mercy to those in most need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have died. We pray especially for Margaret Gardner, who died recently, and for Ed Morgan, Diane Harding, Alison Graham, Nora Fionda, and Gordon Miller whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to rejoice with Our Lady as we sing the Regina Journey. Regina Journey, let's hare, alleluia. mercy always, always with us, through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Bless you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of your hands, we come for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of your hands, to become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to obey you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, by rising he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together in ending him of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and dented willingly into his passion, he took bread, and was giving thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Oh, sorry. Spray. Drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life 
and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop and Don, the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and save from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. This is our feature the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's, Let's just pray. pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Obviously, because Mass is here on Thursday, if you're Mass for Margaret, then there will be no Mass in Yarm. That Mass instead will be on Wednesday. There will be no Mass here on Wednesday. This coming week, we will have um, the first of our confirmation classes. So those of you who have signed up yet, yeah, nine and above, it will be on Friday evening at 6.30, please. And that will be in the liturgy room at the back. I do apologise. I think at the beginning of Mass, I called Luke Margaret's son. So he's obviously a grandson. This Bill is the son. We now pray for the sake of the Holy Communion is being taken. We pray that the grace of the divine mercy in this Mass may be taken to those who receive this sacrament of us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Proclaims it, for by his power.